Hey, how's it going, class? Matthew Nolan here. Here today, I'm here to talk to you about Saccharomyces cerevisiae. What does that mean, you might ask? Well, Saccharomyces cerevisiae is a Greek Latinized version of the word sugar mold. Some other common names would be brewer's yeast, baker's yeast, or ale yeast. Now, I had my first run-in with baker's yeast, or brewer's yeast, or ale yeast here in Southern California in the form as you see on the left hand side in the test tubes uh, widely available from White Labs uh, when I got introduced to home brewing here in Southern California it's a really big thing I like beer uh, it's something fun I love to drink it it tastes great I love how it tastes and then I fell in love with the process of making beer and that's what led me to want to use uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae as the organism for my profile you can find it in a couple of forms liquid and dry uh, on the right you see the dry version. That's usually what you will use uh, in baking. you find that there. Now this is a picture of me pouring that liquid yeast into a fermenter uh, for making beer. And this is where I really got my, my exposure to uh, yeast and my curiosity of why I wanted to use yeast as my uh, organism. Well, where can you find yeast naturally, somebody might ask. Well, well sugar mold is the name. So we're, we're, you can find it anywhere natural sugars are present. So most oftentimes you'll find yeast cells growing on the uh, waxy outer coat of the cuticle of the fruit skins. Uh, here we have pictured grapes. Often you can find it peaches. Anything that really rots that has sugar in it uh, is not really being rotted. It's being broken down by the yeast. Well, here's an up close picture of yeast cells uh, in their finest form. Now, something really interesting about yeast is yeast is reproduces in two kind of separate different ways, sexually and asexually. Why? Because yeast is a fungus. Well, fungi can produce uh, aerobically or uh, anaerobically, which means with air and without air. So when there's no oxygen present, yeast reproduces in a process called budding, like you see here. A little guy on the side, we call it a daughter cell or a bleb. And it grows out of the side of the parent cell. That's very unique. Let's take a closer look at the, uh, the life cycle of yeast. Uh, sim very similar cell cycle, except for the fact that yeast has that unique property where it can uh, create buds and produce off daughter cells. Uh, as you can see, at the start of the growth, it starts budding. Uh, DNA replication, just like in normal yeast, uh, cell cycle. Uh, nucleus starts to divide. That the spindles are formed and they uh, pull apart that that DNA information and then eventually it uh, becomes its own clone of that other cell. Also yeast can um, reproduce uh, sexually via the use of gamete cells uh, where it creates two haploids uh, come together to make a diploid cell. Uh, you guys remember that from earlier on this year in the class? Alright here we have a picture of uh, yeast taking a pretty good effect on the grape. Here it's starting to break down and if you crush it and you get that juice inside of it, it will ferment. Um, how many guys have ever uh, eaten fruit that you thought was rotting or whatever? Because it had a weird fermenting taste. Uh, it happens to me all the time. If you leave uh, fruit and in the, in the strawberries in the fridge too long or something, uh, you bite into it, it's kind of like a sour, like almost an alcohol taste. That's because Yeast has unique the ability to produce ethanol alcohol when it uh, breaks down substances. What it does is it takes that sugar and breaks it down. And when it does that, it creates two things. It creates uh, CO2 gas and ethanol alcohol, which is used in brewing because people like beer. This is a really old process, but you really have to thank Louis Pasteur for defining it and figuring all this stuff out. He's the first person to actually sit down and say, hey, there's something very unique about this process that yeast has, and I'm going to study it. And he did, and he figured out how to refine the fermentation process. And we should all thank him, because he's a really great guy. Let's give him a round of applause. Yay, Lou Pasteur. Okay, here you can see um, this is a, a normal beer kit. Uh, I have, like, in that black bucket, that is eight pounds of maltose. Uh, why maltose, you might ask? Because, well, yeast likes certain types of sugars, uh, maltose happens to be one of them, and it makes really delicious beer. Also, yeast is a big fan of honey, uh, one of the easier substances to break down for it. Uh, although there are some sugars that cannot really break down, 
like maltose, I mean, as, as you were, lactose from milk. So that's why we don't have any milk beers today. Uh, also, in baking, CO2 is the process they're aiming for there. So they want to uh, get the bread, uh, the yeast growing anaerobically, or aerobically with air. So that's why you pound it and you beat it up and you put all the air into it. And then you let it rest. And when it does that, that's allowing the yeast to eat the sugars and uh, create that CO2 gas that you need to like cause that bread to rise and really give you that fluffy, delicious bread uh, taste and smells uh, that you're used to. Um, yeast contributes to the smell and the taste of bread. Also it contributes to the alcohol levels of beer and the taste of beers. Here we have uh, my finished version of my fermenter uh, after I've added my yeast in. Um, and so now I just pretty much I basically wait for the yeast to do its job. As a home brewer, my job is to keep a sanitized area for the yeast to grow and provide plenty of nutrients. And I provide those nutrients in the form of different sugars, uh, mainly maltose, followed by half honey and other cane sugars in there uh, for it. Um, these are some of the references uh, you can find or that I use to uh, do my research. If you have any uh, questions about this, please feel free to ask me. And thank you for participating in my brief. Thank you.